excited to talk to you today about my summer project, which was a genetic analysis of evolved tooth gain in sticklebacks. As we all know, there's an incredible amount of phenotypic diversity on the planet. This slide demonstrates some of the extreme variability in tooth number and tooth morphology that can be seen in vertebrate animals. The developmental and genetic bases of this variation are not well understood. In the Miller lab, we study how and when during development this variation arises. In particular, I'm interested in studying the genetic basis of morphological evolution. Now, studying the genetic mechanisms that underlie evolution is a difficult task and necessitates the use of a model organism. The system that I use to study the genetic basis of evolution is the three-spined stickleback fish. Following the last ice age, ancestral marine sticklebacks were able to populate various freshwater lakes and streams. This generated an array of both marine and freshwater populations that exist today all across the northern hemisphere. You might even see some sticklebacks in Strawberry Creek. In adapting to these new environments, freshwater sticklebacks have evolved several traits distinct from their marine ancestors. This rapid diversification of one species into several different forms is known as an adaptive radiation. Similar to the diversification that you can see in Darwin's finches, this schematic of the stickleback adaptive radiation demonstrates the divergence of physical traits. Pictured in the center is the ancestral marine stickleback, which is surrounded by various derived freshwater forms. As you can see, freshwater stickleback's look very different from their marine ancestor. These differences developed as the freshwater stickleback's were exposed to new environmental pressures, such as new diets. However, despite these differences, marine and freshwater stickleback's can be bred to produce fertile offspring, and this makes them an excellent system for studying the genetic basis of evolution. The feature that I study in sticklebacks is their pharyngeal teeth. Like many fish, sticklebacks have two sets of teeth. Their first set, like our teeth, is situated in the jaw. These are the oral teeth. Their second set, which is highlighted in yellow, is situated in the back of the throat. These are termed pharyngeal teeth and are used for filter feeding. Here's a diagram of the pharyngeal tooth plates of both marine and freshwater stickleback. As you can see, freshwater sticklebacks have significantly more pharyngeal teeth than their marine counterparts. These differences are visible in wild stickleback, <coughs> as well as the lab reared stickleback that I work with. In the Miller lab, we hypothesized that freshwater sticklebacks evolved more teeth as an, adapt as an adaptation to new freshwater diets. I'm interested in determining what genes have been modified in order to produce these differences. Previous research has identified a region on stickleback chromosome 21 that controls a large amount of the variation in tooth number. This region contains many genes, and narrowing down the region was one of my goals for this summer. This brings me to the first part of my CERF project, recombinant mapping. Like humans, sticklebacks are diploid, meaning that they inherit one set of chromosomes from their mother and one set from their father. During the formation of sex cells, maternal and paternal chromosomes can undergo crossing over during which they exchange genetic information. As this diagram shows, the result of crossing over is chromosomes that contain genetic information from both the mother and the father. In stickleback crosses that involve marine and freshwater chromosomes, this process generates recombinant chromosomes that are partially marine and partially freshwater. In the lab, we can screen fish to identify these recombinant chromosomes. In this diagram, you can see that the Blue, the blue freshwater portion of the chromosomes are separated from the marine red portions of the chromosomes by what we call the recombination breakpoint. In the lab, we've identified several recombinant chromosomes that have their recombination breakpoints situated within the tooth controlling region of chromosome 21. The goal of recombinant mapping is to narrow down that region, and I've made a schematic of how we do this. By comparing the tooth numbers of animals with recombinant chromosomes to tooth numbers of their non-recombinant siblings, we can effectively narrow down this region. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a class of recombinant animals that has one red marine chromosome and one recombinant chromosome. If we look at these animals and find that they have a low tooth number, like that of their homozygous marine siblings, this indicates 
that the gene, that the tooth controlling region is contained within the marine portion of this recombinant chromosome. Since the recombinant chromosome, in this case, is acting like a marine chromosome, we would say that this result maps to the left, eliminating any genes to the right of that recombination breakpoint. Alternatively, if we find that these recombinant animals have an intermediate tooth number, like their marine freshwater heterozygous siblings, this indicates that the recombinant chromosome is acting like a marine chromosome, like a freshwater chromosome. This means that the tooth control region is contained within the freshwater portion of that recombinant chromosome. This would eliminate any genes to the left. By doing this process with several different recombinant chromosomes, we can effectively narrow down the region. Then initially, the tooth controlling region of chromosome 21 was 3.5 megabase or 3.5 million base pairs and contained 56 genes. Prior to this summer, we analyzed a recombinant clutch represented by this chromosome. In, the, in analyzing this recombinant clutch, we found that it mapped to the left. The tooth controlling region was contained within the freshwater portion of the chromosome. This eliminated all the genes to the right, narrowing down the region to 2.3 megabase and 36 genes. This summer, I was able to analyze another recombinant clutch represented by this chromosome. Here's the results that I found. On the y-axis here are size-corrected tooth numbers. As you can see, the marine freshwater heterozygous class is very different from the marine recombinant class. The recombinant chromosome, in this case, is acting like a marine chromosome because the marine recombinant class has significantly less teeth than their heterozygous siblings. This told us that the result mapped to the right. This eliminated all the genes to the left of the recombination breakpoint, narrowing down the region to 560,000 base pairs and only 28 genes. Overall, these two recombination experiments led to an 84% reduction in the tooth controlling region and reduced the number of genes in that region by 50%. Here's that tooth controlling region once it had been narrowed down. As you can see at the top, the boundary points of this region are determined by the recombination breakpoints of the two recombination, recombinant experiments that we did. And these are the 28 genes within the region. One of these genes is bone morphogenetic protein 6 or BMP6. BMP6 is an excellent candidate for the gene underlying the large effects that this region has on tooth number. BMP6 has been shown to play a role in tooth development in mice. Additionally, BMP6 is expressed in stickleback tooth plates. Analyzing the role of BMP6 in, its, in determining stickleback tooth number has been a long-standing goal in the lab, and this leads me to the second part of my research project, talents, which you heard a little about from Bobby. TALENS stands for Transcription Activator-like Effector Nucleases, and it's a process used to knock out genes in order to determine their function. TALENS is a relatively new procedure and has recently revolutionized the study of developmental biology. And I've made a schematic of how TALENS works. Here's a stickleback embryo, which contains our, target, our gene that we are targeting, targeting for knockout, in my case, the MP6. We inject this embryo with a pair of TALEN proteins. These proteins are designed to adhere specifically to our, to our target gene. Here you can see that the blue portions of the talent protein pair are binding specifically to the BMP6 gene. The red portions of these proteins represent two halves of the nuclease domain. When both are present and situated in the right location, they will cut the DNA. This cut DNA then undergoes DNA repair. However, this repair is faulty and generates various types of deletions or sometimes insertions in the target gene, thereby disrupting its function. Previous work in the lab has successfully generated BMP6 deletions in sticklebacks. These are the types of deletions that we've seen in our talent injected fish as compared to the wild type BMP6 gene. These injected fish contain BMP6 deletions in some of their cells, but not all of them. However, if a fish has BMP6 deletions in its germline, we can breed this fish to produce offspring that are heterozygous for a BMP6 deletion. This would be a stable line, and generating a stable line was one of our goals for the summer. Here's how we generate the stable line. We take a talent injected fish that has BMP6 deletions and breed it with a wild type non-injected fish. We can then screen the offspring to determine whether or not the BMP6 deletion has been passed on. We were able to do this this summer with a talent injected female which we crossed with a wild-type male. When analyzing the offspring, we found that 
had a 13 base pair deleted BMP6 gene. Therefore, we successfully generated a, sta a BMP6 deleted stable line. It's important to note that this deletion is 13 base pairs. Since 13 is not a multiple of 3, this ensures that there will be a frame shift in the amino acid sequence of the BMP6 gene. This essentially guarantees the loss of function in the gene. Conclusions and future directions. From my recombinant mapping experiments, I was able to find map the tooth controlling region on chromosome 21. In the future, we'll be able to use even more recombinant chromosomes to narrow down this region even further. From my talents experiments, we successfully generated a 13 base pair deleted stable line. Generation of a talents deleted stable line has never before been done in sticklebacks, though others in the field are trying. But in the future, we can grow up those BMP6 deleted fish and, and breed them. This, in this, eventually, we'll be able to count teeth in BMP6 deleted sticklebacks in order to determine what role BMP6 plays in determining stickleback tooth number. I'd like to thank the SURF program and the Pergo Fund for sponsoring this summer, and especially Nathan for being our awesome mentor this summer. I want to thank my PI, Craig Miller, and everyone in the Miller Lab, and most importantly, my mentor, Phil Clevis, who really taught me a lot this summer and really helped me make this project a success. And thanks to all of you for listening.